Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. You know, I've done a lot of videos on ramen, a lot of videos on ramen, but I haven't done a lot on his equally delicious, slightly thicker cousin, the udon. So I really wanted to go try some of the best udon places here. And the first place I'm going to is widely considered one of the most popular, one of the best udon places in Tokyo, Shen Udon. We're a few minutes from Shinjuku Station and it's down this little street. Yep. I see the line already. Supposedly there's always a line. Right now it's about 3.30 in the afternoon. Still a line. They give you a menu as you're waiting in line. And of course it's separated into cold udon and hot udon. That looks insane. And then there's a fried bacon. It's a hot day, but I had to try both hot and the cold. So I got two. Actually, because I was by myself, I only waited a few minutes. That's the glow of a star taking center stage on that plate. Even though the tempura looks amazing, but make no mistake, this is 100% a star. Start off with a little tempura. Oh my God, even the chicken tempura gave me a little out of body experience. Oh my gosh. My tempura was remarkable. This is not even the star of the meal. So light and crispy on the outside, so juicy. All right, we've got to get into the noodles. I can't wait anymore. The noodles are just incredibly, incredibly chewy and fresh. And that slurp just cooled me down all the way to my core. The dipping sauce, you can taste the dashi. I think a bit of anchovies as well. A little soy, the flavor. If you look up umami in the dictionary, you'll find this dipping sauce. This almost tastes like a sweet, crispy shrimp lollipop. That was the perfect crunchy complement to these soft chewy noodles. It's a slurp you never want to end. I love cold udon just because I want the original texture. I want my noodles to be as chewy as possible. This piece of tempura is just amazing. So tender. I mean, I've had wudong, um, obviously, in New York. It doesn't come close. Just the freshness and the bounciness and chewiness of the noodles alone beats anything I've had outside of Japan. And the dipping sauce, because the noodles are thick, you need something with a lot of flavor. I mean, just one swim through the sauce made the noodles so incredibly tasty. Just that umami flavor, like, that will imprint in my memory for the rest of my life. Glad I started with the cold first because I was pretty hot outside, but I'm ready to heat things up now. There's some cheese pepper sitting on top of egg yolk. And I mainly got this bowl because of this, a tempura bacon. I mean, bacon is already good, but can you imagine it tempuranized? Wow, I can smell the cheese just melting onto the noodles right now. The cheese and yolk just built this awesome little nest down here. You see that? And the noodles are just steeping in it, having a lot of fun partying together becoming even more delicious. And what's so perfect about these noodles is that they are grabbing on to the sauce because that's what they eat does. Not only does it give it a great creamy texture, it binds all the ingredients onto the noodles themselves. This is the most deliciously decadent bowl of udon ever. I mean, cheesy udon. Udon's already good. Has some cheese in it, makes it even better. 
mix some spice and sesame seasoning here as well. It's not one dimensional at all because usually with cheese, it's all you can taste is cheese, but you can also taste the creaminess of the eggs and the umami still from the, from, some, from the sauce they added to the bottom of this bowl. And by the way, meet the ultimate piece of bacon. Is there anything more decadent and satisfying than a fried piece of bacon? The answer, there is not anything. This is just crazy. Wow, that's just a shame. I don't even know how to begin to describe this right now. I think I just blacked out for a minute. This is just intense. This might be the creamiest tasting bacon I've ever had because after taking a crunch on the outer layer of the tempura, because the outer layer of the tempura is crunchy and it soaked up all that egg and cheese. So you get that huge cream factor. This bowl of tempura is just wrong. It's just, it's just like, it's so good, it's wrong. But it's so simply delicious. If this is wrong, I, I, I don't want it to be right. It's so intense. Every single bite, I'm a little overwhelmed. But I love the fact that even though it's so cheesy, you can still taste all the other elements in this bowl. Like the crunchy, fragrant scallions. That was incredible. I wish I had some more noodles to just kind of lap up that little bit of leftover sauce. So I really just don't want to waste a single drop of this. Mm. It's bad manners to lick your bowl clean in Japan, right? Yeah, that pretty much bad manners anywhere. All right. How awesome was that? Let's go talk outside. All right, that was an incredible wudon feast I just had. The thing that stood out most about that place to me was how incredibly fresh and chewy the noodles were. The tempuras are great, the sauce is great, the broth is great, but those noodles, I mean, without a doubt, that was magical. And you can see them making it fresh in the window. I mean, noodles, you gotta have it fresh. I think the two orders I got really contrasted each other. And I'm glad I got the cold and the hot so I kind of compare it. The cold, the noodles are definitely a lot chewier, a lot more al dente. That was when I was able to experience the full on um, potential, the, the, the star quality of those noodles. I mean, do you see it shiny? I mean, it knows it's a star. The dipping sauce also was perfect. I've been to wudon places where you dip the noodles and because the noodles are typically a little thick, sometimes you don't, you don't get a lot of flavor, but not here. One dip, all you need. And then the hot udon, was literally a flavor bomb, a cheesy flavor bomb. I mean, that was as decadent of a bowl of udon as you'll ever find, I think. I mean, cheese and egg yolk and a piece of fried bacon. You guys who've had really good tempura before, you know how good really good tempura is, right? Now imagine adding bacon to that. And I love the fact that although it is so cheesy and so much flavor, it doesn't cover up the individual ingredients that's added into that bowl. I'm just glad I got both. I mean, I asked for both. I expected them to be like, no, nah, it's too much for you. Or they didn't want to serve me two bowls, but they were really cool. They're really nice. That was just a deliciously satisfying experience. And as my first official, Udon meal here in Tokyo. I think I'm pretty happy. All right, there's a couple more really unique places I want to go to, but I think they're closed for today. So, see you tomorrow. Hey, good morning. Such a nicer day today, right? I mean, come on, who needs the sun and the humidity? This is like cloudy and nice, about to rain. Yeah, this is good noodle weather. And I'm going to my next udon place. It's called Hamayama Udon. And I walk to this neighborhood and I see this. And I got scared because I mean, this 30 minutes before the store is opening. But luckily, they're waiting for omelet rice, which that's still pretty awesome. I might, I might try this afterwards if the line is short. But thank God, not my line. My line is over there, I think. And they're open 30 minutes before. Don't, don't trust Google's time on this stuff. This udon is really, really unique. In fact, it doesn't even look like a udon. Let me show you. They're known for their wide udon. It looks like almost Chinese la mian. And they have the regular one as well. But gotta go for these. Again, cold or hot. And their wide noodles are called Omi Himokawa. They actually won um, the first place in the Battle of Udon for three consecutive years. I gotta say a big thank you to the wait staff here. They don't speak much English, and that was a lot of patience dealing with me because I was trying to order all sorts of stuff and ask all sorts of questions through sign language and I think we made it. Oh, so she told me to eat some of these vegetables. I think this is where the chili is, but I haven't really figured out how to use it. Okay, I'm really stupid. You pull, you pull this out and then you dump the chili. Really yummy. It's 
will go really well with the udon. My neighbor's udon was here and uh, just kind of gave me the sly eye. <laughs> looks so good. And uh, I just heard this older Japanese gentleman sitting beside me utter the magical words, Oishi, after a big slurp. The anticipation is killing me. First of all, this bull is so cute. He's that famous bear, I forgot his name. Hot udon. See some bamboo, some veggies, carrots, fish cake, and I get a side of salmon roll with preserved veggies over rice and seaweed. And again, what's really unique about this udon place, check out the noodles. They look like Chinese hand-pulled wide noodles. The type I love. This looks so incredibly beautiful. You know, you know how like Wizard of Oz has got the golden brick rolled? Well, this is the delicious wide udon roll that's laid across this bowl. And this is the noodles they're really known for. So if you come here, this is what you gotta get. Oh, wow, Oishi is right. That guy beside me, he wasn't kidding about this being totally Oishi. I thought the last udon place I went to had a huge umami flavor. This is the king of all that is umami. Oh my god. This is borderline incredible. Mm. I don't know what I love more. The broth with the noodles. The noodles are extremely chewy and so incredibly smooth. But wow, seriously, this broth. This is some of the greatest broth you could ever have in a udon. And these noodles, although they're white, they're so refined and clean and fresh. I didn't know udon broth could taste like this. And it's seemingly simple. You guys want to see a udon conveyor belt? Mix in a little pickle veggies. Wow, I put the veggies good too. You can also really tell the quality of ingredients they use. The dashi, the seafood flavor they add to it. I've never sipped soup from a bear before, so don't judge me. We had a really intimate food relationship today, me and this bear. Totally forgot about the rice. She recommended this. First of all, this thing is just pretty. Pretty and yummy. A little slimy too. I mean, it's tasty, definitely not as good as the udon. And that's why it's a side dish. I try to finish my hot udon as quickly as I can because we got the cold one waiting right here. Tempura shrimp, mushrooms, and here is my cold udon. Just as beautiful as I left it. This is their number one recommended dish here. And they told me to pour some of this into the wasabi. It's everything I love in a bowl of noodles. Sabol egg, a mound of meat, in this case fatty pork belly. Watch that eggy golden waterfall just wash over all the ingredients inside this bowl. And what this is gonna do is gonna give it a super creamy texture and it's gonna bind all the ingredients together. Mix it a little bit, just let that egg get in there. I love this spice. The texture of the noodles is incredible. Amazingly chewy. And it's not as chewy probably as the regular udon because it doesn't have the thickness. But you're gonna really appreciate the mouthfeel of these noodles because they are so, so smooth. And because they're thinner, they're able to grab onto more of the seasoning, the ingredients around it. And I just dumped some of the sauce on here. And, and they're actually really, really sturdy noodles. I mean, I'm pulling them out. None of them, you see, none of them are really damaged and they're not going soft. A little wasabi, unbelievable. Give you a little bowl of tempura over rice. That's a nice crunch. A little bit sweet. Ridiculous crunch. Tempura mushrooms are my favorite. 
on the menu they say that they source all their ingredients locally and they try to keep things simple. You can definitely tell the high quality of the ingredients, but trust me, ain't nothing simple about this. If you come here, you gotta try the hot broth. That's a must. But also, you gotta get an order of the cold noodles. It's really interesting because the noodles are incredibly delicate. They're refined, they're beautiful. And just eating that with a melty mouthful of pork belly, That's like an orchestra and hard rock in a bowl. And trust me, they go really, really well together. Anyway, a little bit of egg and broth left in my bowl. I got an idea. My leftover rice. That's awesome. A little wasabi, a little yolky, a little creamy. Great way to finish that rice. You have a great job. I mean, every day people just filling your belly with udon noodles. I hope you know how lucky you are. Oh my God, since I was eating the udon, the omelet rice line grew like, like three folds. This is crazy. Good Lord, I'm glad I wasn't filming this today. Maybe I should be. That was two amazing udon places. My only regret is I couldn't go to more udon places because I'm leaving soon. So I, I, I guess I'm udon, which is something really sad to say. But guys, next time you're in Japan, of course, get your ramen, but don't forget to show the udon some love, you know? Because really, they deserve it. And trust me, when you love them, they're gonna love you back. Like right here, right here, and here. And as always, the places I went to is listed for you in my description box below. Thank you all so much for watching. Till we eat again, see you later. This is the om rice. All right, you know what? Just just thought I'd get in line for this om rice since right by the udon place. Might as well. Vivian, Hi. we're gonna eat together. This gonna be cool. All right, so you get a lunch set, one food item, creamy omelet on fried rice. I think that's what I'm gonna get. I don't like the food shame, but this thing is a little plump and jiggly. I'm kind of confused by this. Oh, it's good. It's good, right? It's really good. Is that ketchup spicy or is it just me? Let me try. It's very tangy and so buttery. Yeah, you taste a lot more of the ketchup than you thought. And then the texture is, is really interesting. It is extremely creamy. You know what this tastes like, really? It tastes like a bunch of butter on rice. After the initial surprise of this, and you just kind of let the egg swirl around, touching every single grain of the rice. Every bite you take, I love the rice because it's such a texture contrast. Eating this, it, it's, it's like going on a date. When, when you first see each other, you meet, you taste it, you're like, ah, it's okay. But then like after like the fourth or fifth bite, you're just like, I bought the ring already and I, I just don't know when to pop the question. It does get overly creamy after a few more bites. So almost exactly like a relationship. After the marriage, sometimes it gets a little overbearing. And that's when you add some pickle radish to the relationship. You need a little spice, a little acid, a little tanginess in your love affair. Otherwise, it won't last. Remember that guys, for dating and for food. Cap it up some green tea. Oh wow, I'm glad I came here. I saw the line, it wasn't gonna come in. Luckily I saw Vivian, so ate together. Awesome, good food, good company. Thanks Vivian. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, now, not gonna go nap or something. I don't know what I do after I eat. It's kind of kind of a blur until my next meal. See you later.